we start with asking ourselves the question, what makes the star shine? We go further back and look at when stars are forming. Here is a view of the beautiful Orion Nebula, a place where star formation is ongoing. Here gigantic clouds of gas and dust are uh, condensing, coming together, uh, they are contracting under their own uh, gravitational pull and uh, this pull essentially pulls everything inside in such a way that you might get a spherical condensation, uh, a protostar which condenses, increases its temperature, density pressure inside and becomes a star. Well, that happens when it becomes a star, when in its interior, this increase in density, temperature and pressure makes collisions between its internal constituents, which at the beginning of a stellar lifetime are essentially hydrogen, protons and uh, these are uh, colliding together and um, if there is sufficient increase in density, temperature and pressure, densities and temperatures here, there is a possibility that four of these hydrogen nuclei might combine together and form a helium nucleus. In general, such a process would uh, only be such densities and temperatures, pressures, conditions are possible only not everywhere in the star but only in its interior core regions where such conditions could prevail and wherein such reactions could take place and the energy generated, in the, the difference in mass between the final product and the initial product converted into energy is sufficient. In a, in, in a star with the kind of amount of material that it has to fuel it over a long period of time for it to be alive as a, a star in prime of life in the main sequence stage. During this state there is if there is an attempt to contract the star further inwards under its own gravitational pull, the interior energy generation is able to withstand that inward pull and uh, so the star remains stable in this phase of life. Well, it might end this fuel and um, might then go on to other stages of life. Uh, other other uh, fuel uh, burning, once uh, hydrogen burning interior is completed, perhaps helium burning, if it is more massive star, maybe carbon oxygen burning and so on. But if it is not such a massive star, maybe after hydrogen burning, helium burning, the star might complete all the its fuel in and might contract, interior might contract, it might throw out its external atmosphere layers. Uh, out into space and become a, becoming a planetary nebula and the interior might be just a remnant star left, just uh, visible as a hot dim star, just radiating out its remnant energy. So what happens at this stage? If gravity wants to collapse it further, what's going to stop it? So this was an issue which puzzled troubled. Eddington discussed this in some length in his book The Internal Constitution of Stars and this particular problem was looked at by Ralph Fowler also of Cambridge and uh, he discusses the conclusion or the uh, matter that was troubling Eddington in this state for a white bomb, where the 
Emission of energy by this turbine might continue for some time depending on what its surface temperature is and its internal temperature might continue to provide the gradient necessary to drive this radiation out and as long as there is this matter at a high temperature, radiation might continue. But then the problem that is troubling Eddington and was looked at by Fowler was that at some stage it would have radiated away so much energy that its energy is less than the same matter, normal atoms expanded absolute zero of temperature. And now if gravity was to collapse it further, what would happen to the star? This was a question which needed an answer from the new physics. That was the, the revolution which was just taking place 